Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Emily. Today's video is a Christmas DIY video. We're gonna be using spindles, bottle brush trees, and we're gonna be going for more of like a rustic, vintage farmhouse vibe. So if that is something you're interested in, let's get started on these projects. We're gonna start these projects with these spindles that I cut down from unfinished bed posts and spindle pieces that I got from a garage sale earlier this year. I have done some projects with them and I have some left over, so I'm cutting them down to the different sizes that I'm looking for. Um, I'm going to be doing two different projects with these, so the smaller ones are what we're gonna focus on for this first project, but I also have these larger ones cut down and those will be um, later projects coming on. So the um, spindle pieces, I actually had my husband cut them down for me. I just marked different sizes. I was trying, for the small ones, I'm going for more ornaments or small decor pieces and then for these larger ones I'm going to set aside for more like salvage looking pieces and or risers um, so we're like I said we're going to focus on these small ones for this first project for all of these small ones because I am going for the rustic like vintage farmhouse vibe for these projects I want to have a really natural looking distressed look so I'm going to be applying wax to all of the small spindles and then I'm going to immediately apply different color chalk paint to them I'm also not doing um, full coverage but I'm trying to give it most most coverage um, I'll give it like 90% coverage and the wax is going to help with the distressing because the paint will not adhere to the wax so once everything else is dry and we go to distress it back then anywhere that the paint was on top of that wax it will be removed so it'll have more of this um, distress like natural distress look so you can use a sanding block or a sander I'm actually going to scrape it off this time I don't know if I've done this technique in the past I usually just sand it down but I have seen other um, youtubers that have used the scraping technique and I wanted to give it a shot so for this for all of these I am just using my Cricut scraper um, if you have like a, a paint scraper or something like that that will work as well and I am just using the scraper across the entire piece especially where I remember where I put the wax and then, like I said, the paint just kind of like flakes off. And because it flakes off, it gives a more natural distressed look versus sanding. So once I have that completely done, I decided that instead of using um, like a polycrylic sealer, I was going to do clear wax because I wanted to age these pieces even more. So I'm using the clear wax and then once the clear wax is applied, I am going to be using Dixie Bell dirt. So it's like a powder, but it looks like dirt <laughs> and hence the name. Um, so I am just going to apply the dirt or dust all over the piece with this chip brush and then I'm going to take a cloth and wipe back the leftover so that you so that the powder isn't like you know it doesn't come off in your hand because it has been rubbed into the wax and the remainder has been removed and it just gives this really old like rustic look to these pieces that I really like and it was exactly what I was going for so two of them I decided not to turn into like ornaments I decided to put bottle brush trees in and I just drilled two hole or a hole in the center of each of them and these bottle brush trees I got from the Dollar Tree these were part of the 20 trees that I got uh, last weekend or was it the weekend before well I mentioned it in my last video and um, so I did it for just these two because the base of them just looked like 
a bottle brush tree needed to go in them. The remaining four pieces, I added eye hooks to the top of them so that they could become ornaments. And these are the or small, the eye screws, excuse me. Um, I grabbed them from Ace Hardware. So I did have that image up there of the size that I used. They had different sizes. I didn't know how many sizes that they had until I went there. So those were the ones that I picked. I really like the size of them for these ornaments. I'm just going to attach some twine to them or string. And then these are done. I hope you like this first project and let me know what you guys think. So we are going to be taking these knobs that I grabbed from an estate sale as well as other clear ones that I grabbed from a garage sale. These white vintage ones are amazing. I love them so much. Um, we're going to be putting bottle brush trees in them. Um, I know this isn't a new DIY project and it has been everywhere, but I love this look um, and I hope that you guys like it too because... I, I just, I, I saw these knobs, um, a while ago and I immediately thought about Christmas time. So I set them aside until it was Christmas. Um, so I will say you do have to use a lot of hot glue. Um, I used a lot to make sure that the bottle brush trees would stay secure into these knobs and the knobs that had holes in the sides of them. So this first one, I didn't do this, um, but you can see the hole that is um, in, you know, in the knob. I do end up using painter's tape to cover the hole while I apply the hot glue. And then once it dries, it peels right off so that none of the hot glue oozes through um, the side of the knob. And these from the Dollar Tree, these white like flocked ones, the um, the branches go like all the way down to the bottom of the the you know the wire um, trunk, if you will. Whereas the other green ones that I have here, you can see more of that wire trunk. So I did have to clip some of it, the trunk off, so that it sat lower in the knob so it looked more full and you didn't see as much of the wire trunk. So I did that. Other than that, um, these bottle brush trees are almost done. On a couple of them, I decided to add um, this like ribbon. It's not really ribbon. It's actually drop cloth that I cut and ripped apart. I just wanted to add a little something to some of them just to give a little different like texture and look. So I am applying this drop cloth to just a couple of them and then I'm going to stamp on um, Christmas words to them. So one of them I did joy. I think I did fa la la and Mary on the other one. And like I said, I just did a couple um, because I know not everyone probably is going to like this look, but I did want to add something a little different to just the normal bottle brush trees in these knobs. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Alright, for this project, we are back to these bigger spindle pieces or 
salvaged, you know, wood pieces, whatever you want to call them, we are back to them. So I'm going to be doing two different techniques on these to get a distressed look. So I have done this before on my channel where I have added glue to these two pieces and then added paint on top of them for a distressed look. So for two of these, I am going to be applying the glue and I'm just using regular Dollar Tree glue, nothing fancy. Um, I'm using this chip brush because I can throw it away when it's done. Um, the key is to, and I didn't do this this time around, um, the more glue you have, the more of that crackle effect and distressed look you're going to have. I did not add enough glue to this, to these, to these pieces. I, I did in like a couple areas, but it still just wasn't enough. And then when you apply the paint, um, you want to apply the paint in as minimal amount of strokes as possible. So try to only do about one or two passes if you can help it. Um, you really don't want to mix the paint with the glue because then the that effect, the crackle effect is not going to, to work. So um, I'm trying to only do a couple passes with the paint. So I'm using a large amount of paint so that it's thicker when it applies, when I apply on it onto the spindle piece so I don't have to do as many passes. And then once I have the paint applied to the spindle, I am going to hit it with my um, heating, my, my heating gun, and I'm going to try and speed up the process of it drying and enhancing the crackle and distressed look. So this paint, actually I have, showcased in a, a video, I don't know, maybe like um, two months back, and it has um, like a primer built into it. It's for furniture, but I have used it on crafts before. I will say this didn't have as much of a crackle as I was hoping, and I'm not sure if it's because of the paint with it having some like primer in it or again, if I didn't use enough glue, I still got some crackle and the, using the heat gun really did help enhance the crackle. So the more heat you apply, the more crackle you're going to get. On the other piece that I used the glue on, I just used white chalk paint and I really didn't get any type of crackle at all. So I just don't think I used enough glue. For this third one, I really liked how the wax looked on the first project spindle pieces. So I decided to do the wax all over this piece and then I'm applying paint. Now I am using Dixie Belle paint for this one as well as the white um, piece that's in the frame here. I also use Dixie Belle paint as well for that one. And this one that I'm painting right now, it's, um, I think it's like vintage duck egg and it is such a beautiful blue. I really like it for the Christmas like season. I don't normally decorate with blues, but I think it's very, I mean, it has like that vintage old blue look to it too. So maybe that also helps, but I really love this blue color. And then once the paint dries, I am just using the same Cricut scraping tool just to scrape off um, as much of the paint with the wax as possible. For these other pieces, um, or I should say for this one, I am going to use brown wax to give it to like richen up that green color and then I'm adding the Dixie Belle dirt to it as well to give it that older salvaged look and I really like how the brown wax with the Dixie Belle dirt with this green color how it turned out I I really really like this one and then for this white one that I used the glue on as well as the blue one that I used the wax on I'm just going to be sealing it with um, just polycrylic. I'm using the Binwax polycrylic. I believe it's like the ultra flat um, or ultra matte 
sheen. I just, I like how it's not super shiny. Um, I end up not doing anything else to these. I just seal them as is. I didn't want to add anything else to them. So guys, this is the first time I am going to be using the Amazing Resin. I am so excited. I bought this stuff like a month ago and I have been scared to try it. <laughs> so I am using this, the IOD mold. I forget what the mold is, um, but I will leave it up on the screen. So this is my first time doing it on screen with you guys. So it was actually really, really easy. Um, and I mean, I also love science. So I think I thought this was super cool. So what I was showing you earlier is the, the molds show the amount of like liquid to fill that mold, like with milliliters. So the amazing resin is a liquid. So I was doing the math to see how much of the resin I would need. And so my math was off. I added a little bit more than I, I made more of the mixture than I needed, but that's okay. I just made more molds with the resin that I had left over. So you're going to make mix equal parts of solution A and then equal parts of solution B, mix it together for about 30 seconds, and then you're going to pour it into your mold. And this image on the left, you can see it turning white. That's real time. I am not speeding that up at all. That's how fast this dries. And it was so cool to see it. Again, I also really like science, so I thought this was awesome. Um, I let it sit for more than 10 minutes. I got sidetracked doing something else, but these popped out super easy, and I just set the mold aside, and I picked the three molds that I wanted. I went with the three different, like, holly, berry pick or pieces, and I'm just going to be painting them a green and red color. Um, I'm using acrylic paint and that may not be the best paint choice to use. I don't know if chalk paint would be better. I did have to do a couple coats with the acrylic paint and then I did seal it with polycrylic. Um, it, it ended up working out fine, but chalk paint, you probably would only have to use one coat. For the back of these pieces, you can see that they're white. I did end up spray painting once the front was dry completely and sealed with the polycrylic. I did flip them over and I uh, sprayed them with a green, like a dark hunter green chalk paint, or not chalk paint, spray paint and just so that the back was sealed because it was a lot shinier. So I wanted to make sure that that was sealed properly. So I did just spray paint. Now for the tops of these, like I said, these are already sealed with the polycrylic at this point. And I just wanted to add a little something extra to them. So I'm using this like goldish bronze, you know, gilding wax, and I'm just lightly brushing it on top of the green parts of the holly. I'm going to attach these with twine to these salvaged, you know, pieces, and then these are done. I didn't want to drill any holes into them. I thought that would be great. You could put any type of, you know, any size Christmas tree that would fit onto it. If you had a Christmas figurine that you wanted to add onto it, or if you just wanted to leave it alone as is, as just an architectural piece in your decor, I wanted it to be, you know, up to the person who ever ended up buying them. These are going into my booth. So um, I do want to make some more because I really love how these turn out, especially this green one. And you guys are going to have to let me know what you think. I hope you all enjoyed these projects and please let me know in the comments which one was your favorite. I am 
prepping for the vendor night, the refresh in my booth for Christmas. It is this coming Saturday is the Christmas open house at Twin Rivers Local Vintage in Melbourne, Florida. So I am preparing for that because Thursday night I'm going down there to reset everything for Christmas. So I've been working really hard. I have a lot of other projects that I want to get done to bring down there that I just don't have enough time for. So those will definitely be videos coming up soon as well as I will show you the refresh of my booth and how it looks for Christmas as well as hopefully I can get video of the other spaces in there as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing and I will see you all in my next video. Bye guys.